Martin Luther King Jr. was jailed uh, once in Birmingham, and he said he turned to his white jailer and said, you know, you and I aren't that much different. We're not that, we're, there's not a huge gulf that separates us. You don't have control over the institutions which govern your life. You don't have a basic say-so in American democracy, and yet the dominant forces of white supremacy manipulate you into believing you are my enemy. And unfortunately, that's, that's a strategy that hasn't changed from Nixon and before Nixon, George McGovern before that on the Democratic side and the Republican side. Um, and so I think what we have to tell our white brothers who are working class, blue collar cats, is that you're in the same boat uh, as most African American people, as most Latino people. You suffer from the economy equally. If you allow elite white politicians to manipulate you into believing that your real enemy is a black guy who works alongside you in a factory where you're both inhaling toxic chemicals that will lead both of you to die early, as opposed to this elite figure uh, in the American political echelon or corporate structure that is living off of your anxiety about this black guy, you are going down to defeat. And I think what we have to say to them is that we're in a larger same boat in terms of class, in terms of some of the cultural values we share, even if we have different racial approaches to that. It's interesting that we have a language and vocabulary for race in America, but we don't have much of a vocabulary for class. And many people can't make that distinction. Black or white, well, what about poor or rich? What about uh, uh, health care or non-health care? And when we begin to break the numbers down, the number of white people on welfare, the number of white people who are poor, the number of white people who don't uh, control the government in ways they'd like to see, and the m number of white people who say, you know what, you want affirmative action, but why should your kid get an advantage over me? Or you want reparations, why should your kid get an advantage over mine when we don't have any um, economic wherewithal either? And I say to them, look, it's not either or. What's amazing is that right-wing conservatives become Marxists when it comes to the issue of race. Aha, you better watch out because those black people are taking money out of your pocket. How many black CEOs of major Fortune 500 companies are there? How many uh, black senators in the Senate? How many even black Congress people? How many people where it counts for white people in terms of their livelihood? Uh, are they subject to black rule? Not many. So when white people back up and begin to make an analysis about how they have been manipulated by these white elites, there will be the possibility of forging a much stronger link between progressive, working class, blue collar, white, and black and Latino and red people as, as opposed to the continued manipulation of white working and corporate elites.